Coming up this week on the ADG Podcast, we are going to be talking our Christmas wish list, but not about presents, on who we want as the next Lions GM and head coach. We have a brand new music today, brand new movie review. Jake, yes, Jake has the top five, which is always great. That and much more. All that coming up on the ADG Podcast. What's it like in the journalism program? Hi. That's why last week he's like, ah, fuck this guy. Fuck that guy. Fuck this guy. You're cool, but fuck this guy. Someone, uh, whoever does uh, does their Twitter account, was offended by what the HG podcast had to say on Twitter. <laughs> All controversial now. This is the- no, where? You know why? Because they just thought of this shit last week and they put in a movie. Now. So I'm not going to have to worry about catching anything from Jake or vice versa so he's good uh, Catch so look, some manners there and all your uh, asshole attitude is rubbing off on you <laughs> finally it only took about three years so hey uh, 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 i wonder how long that recording session was okay ben you ready <laughs> yeah i all right thank you we're done It'd be nice i'm gonna give it a solid 2.5 out of five. Oh wow All right, welcome to the ADG Podcast. I'm Jacob. Darren is also here. We survived the traumatic <laughs> experience of the Detroit Lions cleaning out yes. the broom closet. Yes. And uh, nah, that, that was that was interesting. That was interesting. I know we did our Instagram live video yeah, as our, soon as our, it happened. Our, our instant reaction video, yes. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Even though I was like down the street from you, literally for like the first time ever. It's <laughs> like, yeah, let's yeah. Insta. <laughs> Insta. We were, we, we'll good. show how trendy and yes. how popular we are. Uh, yeah. Right. So, Jake, let's get down to the meat and potatoes of it. Obviously, mm-hmm. this was a year too late, but Sheila stepped up and she made the announcement that they're moving on from uh, one Matt Patricia and his. Uh, his buddy ball uh, GM, uh, Bob Quinn. Uh, So obviously it goes into you're you're kind of in limbo right now because you really don't have any leadership at the top or on the field. You're pretty much uh, players and coaches are playing for their jobs right now with, with five games left on the schedule. Now it, it, it becomes more of an audition, not only for coaches, but for players as well to see if they can if, if they see what it takes to stick around this team uh, if they want to be part of this rebuild which is going to suck for a year or two but hopefully they have the right people at the helm to do it uh, when it comes down to the hiring process so Jake uh, let's start with the current Lions right now they, they're they in Chicago this week taking on the Bears uh, at the Soldier Field uh, Mitchell, the crusher Trubisky will be at center for the Bears. Mm-hmm. And the Bears will probably be very angry after getting uh, pretty much destroyed on national TV against uh, uh, by the Green Bay Packers. So they're, they're going to be a bunch of angry Bears uh, oh, yeah. this Sunday, uh, which doesn't go bode well for the Lions and their inefficient way of how their offense has been looking the past two years. Um, When it comes down to it, do you see them like completely flipping the script when it comes to the offensive side of the ball now that Daryl Bevel has the keys to the car? Well, here's this is going to be a typical Lions trap game. You expect them to have, like you said, no leadership, which, mind you, is not that different from what they've had. Um, But it's a typical trap game by the Lions where. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, they, this team should be falling apart, but they're going to come out swinging the ball like it's nobody's mm-hmm. business and beat right. uh, the Bears by, like, 20. Yeah, the, the week after that, Whoa. they're going to lose by, like, 50 again. Whoa. But, uh, oh, no, no, it's going to happen. Uh, because you, this is what everybody expects. This is this SOL still right now. And that's they're going to be rejuvenized. The staffer is going to come out there with his slippery fingers. <laughs> and he's gonna start slinging the rock all over the place. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bench my um, starters again from that team. They're gonna get like 50 <laughs> fantasy points just because I don't have them on the on on the list that week. Oh yeah, it's gonna be That's terrific. Right. That's right. Uh, a little side note: um, this is the last week of the regular season when it comes to fantasy football, mm-hmm. and Jake and I are in the playoff position right now. Uh, yeah. So it's 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 the 
it's the preview to the main uh the, the coming attraction uh, this week in fantasy yeah but if it wasn't for the bullshit, uh, bullshit uh, Lions <laughs> two weeks ago situation, I'd be in first fucking place. Well, okay, because right. I don't know. I, I benched these fuckers, and they decided to actually get points that week. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll let we'll let um, you know our running back situation only come down to one guy. Yeah, the guy that I had I had on the bench, fucking Adrian Peterson, with two fucking running touchdowns. Oh, he's on my bench getting twenty points. It's okay. It's fine. It's all good, Jay. Get out. I'll continue. Sorry, I was just had to get off that yeah. on the chest no, because I, you know I, nobody I, trades in this league. Oh, they do. They do. No, they no, not with me. You, you, <laughs> well, you got to give a little to get a little there, Jay. Well, uh, I, I, I doubled everybody's uh, trade, but no, it's yeah. okay. Pick on the guy on top. I, I'm okay. With it. Okay, all right. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, but according to the the current injury report for Lions, uh, carry on Johnson. I'm sorry, not carry on Johnson. DeAndre Swift is out of concussion protocol. Uh, mm-hmm. Interim head coach Daryl Bevel said he remains day to day, so that's something to keep an eye on. And the Lions said they are not considering shutting him down for the rest of the season, which I kind of like it. I'm like, this guy's a rookie; he needs to learn, he needs to play more. And this five games should be a nice uh, preview of what we can see with him next year. You know, once he has a full year under his belt, coming back. Uh, but yeah, I, I like I like that call because Swift pretty much, uh, aside from Kenny Galladay, is are one of the few playmakers that we have on this team, and uh, yeah, I I, I want to see them I, I want to see him there in the lineup every Sunday if he's you know healthy he should be out there. Uh, so Jake, obviously, with with the Lions five games left, uh, where do you see them finishing? Do you see them going zero and five, five and zero? What's what's your realistic? I'm talk, I know you're uh, anti Lions on everything they do is that you think is wrong, which majority of the time you're right when it comes yeah, to that. Thank you. But yeah, but realistically, where do you see them finishing in the next five games? Like, what, what's their what's their going to be their final record in these next five games? Yeah, they're going to go one and four. Mm-hmm. I want I want to go zero and five, obviously, but yeah. go, the, I hopefully they they go you know. One and four. At worst, they'll go uh, two and three. They'll they'll find a way. Like I said, with the way a way to win versus Chicago, because you don't know what Chicago team you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, if it's snowy and um, you know, it's gonna make some uh, interesting uh, observations on the field with that snow. If it snows in Chicago on Sunday, right. um, but yeah, I'm hoping realistically one and four. But I pray okay. for zero and five. Okay. Well, there you go. So you got one and four. I'm in the same boat as you. I think one and four is is kind of in their realm. Possibly win two, but I don't see it happening, especially if, with all those divisional opponents that they have left to play, which under Matt Patricia have yet to beat a division opponent in those three years that Matt Patricia has been at the helm. So maybe Daryl Bevel might win a game or two. So. Good luck to Daryl. And uh, mm-hmm. th- this is big on him because this is where he has his uh, audition. Is potentially, obviously, they're not going to look at him as a head coach. You know, but if he does well, he might get an interview. But, you know, if if uh, if everything goes well, I, I can see him, like, sticking around the league as maybe an offensive coordinator for another team or quarterback's coach or whatever. Yeah, I don't mind him as an uh, as no, an OC. No, he's actually pretty no, no, good. No. Yeah. So he, he's going to be uh, obviously something to, uh, something to keep an eye on. So still a lot of things to watch uh, when it comes to the Lions in uh, their final five games of the season of this 2020 campaign. Uh, but Jake, speaking of coaches, I put together uh, a list uh, and you tell me if this list is credible obviously it's not credible it's it's by me um when it comes to uh, uh who who do you think is going to be the the top coaching candidate for the lions come off season but you, jim you, harbaugh jim harbaugh is possibly on there no uh, so yeah but you but uh jake you have to keep in mind there are a couple teams that are going to be looking for a head coach That's atlanta right. houston yes. Yep. Jacksonville Jaguars uh, uh, obviously are going to be firing their head coach, and yep. you never know. There's always one two surprising uh, fires uh, uh, as soon as uh, the season's over, as Black Monday as they call it. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Denver, uh, their coach is on the hot seat, uh, Vic mm-hmm. uh, Fangio. Uh, so, yeah, there's going to be definitely a plethora of opportunities for these uh, potential head coaches to look at. Mm-hmm. And but so there, we're before, gonna... before you get into your list really yeah. quick, um, do you think uh, Matt Patricia is going to be available for any one of those positions? <laughs> You know what? No, we okay, said, just we, checking. We, we, we said this uh, nope. on on our uh, Instagram live reaction. Detroit is a coaching graveyard. Yeah, when you coach in Detroit, yeah, you get overpaid because you have to because it's Detroit. But you're you're warped so bad by this franchise and this losing culture. You you, you lose the desire to be a head coach uh, again. Uh, just look at Jim Schwartz. And, yeah, and all okay. his... that guy went to the Super Bowl as yeah, a defensive coordinator. As a defensive coordinator, he yep. wasn't making the calls. Nope. <laughs> exactly. And and another thing you keep an eye on, uh, we were talking about uh, different coaches. Uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, candidates potentially out there to make um, to, to make their head coaching debut or just look for a new uh, a new place to. Uh, or the, uh, to continue their coaching career. Mm-hmm. But let's take a look at some of these um, candidates that they have. And I'm going to start at the bottom here because I think as we get near the top, I think you kind of know what the top two is there, Jake. Um, <laughs> so a surprising one that is starting to create waves. He's, he's a young guy, former player, you know, kind of cutting his teeth in Dallas is Kellen Moore. Who, who runs the offense over there in Dallas? This is Which, your list, isn't it? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just, I'm just thinking outside the box here. You know, mm-hmm. former that's Lions, a, that's a good one. drafted yeah. by the Lions, obviously didn't really su- su- succeed, but uh, but he is a pretty good offensive, offensively minded head coach because that's what you have to do. You have to find those diamonds in the rough when it comes to. Uh, the next big thing or the next big thing in coaching, you know, who is going to be the next Andy Reid, who's going to be the next, you know, John Harbaugh, who's going to be the next, you know, Mike Tomlin, you know, or now because it's so offensively minded Lee, who's going to be the next Sean McVay. Mm -hmm. So some of those things you have to keep in mind. So there's Kellen Moore uh, from Dallas, but so that's one. Another one is if they go the coaching ranks, uh, I'm sorry, the college ranks, and someone like Lincoln Riley, who's the head coach out of Oklahoma. Okay. So, 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 would you ever be open to the mind of that? We're having like a college coach just come in, a la Cliff uh, Cliff Kingsbury, and uh, right into the pros. College doesn't translate very well into the pros because of the type of player you're you're coaching. You, mm-hmm. you have to have a fundamental. Um, look at your your entire strategy because it doesn't always apply to uh, the NFL because you, you have different different players like you have players that are dependent when you're in the college and you have players who are getting paid in the, uh, you know not mentioning Alabama here but in the NFL so you have you have a different mindset and so you have to have a really really good idea of what you're doing and be very strong willed to Transition to the NFL properly, and as we know, some of the best coaches in in uh, in college never transferred properly into the NFL mm-hmm. to uh, reach any heights, and and they're yeah. still the best coaches in college ever. Oh, absolutely, no doubt. You can talk about Nick Saban, Saban who yeah. did have a brief time in the NFL, actually cut his teeth at Michigan State, then went to the pros, and then went back to the yeah. college ranks. Obviously, it. it it depends on the, their coaching style, you know. It's a different game because you're instead of like teaching the the game to like kids, you're you're coaching men who, mm-hmm. you know, are getting paid. We're getting a paid lot, exactly a lot of money, a lot of money, more than the coach to uh, to uh, play this game. Mm-hmm. So a wild card, and just humor me here is 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 someone that's currently already in the state of Michigan, and that's Jim Harbaugh. So this is well, over. We're Jake, done. <laughs> with, Jake, Jake, Jake. With, <laughs> with, with, in the crazy up, the upside-down universe that is 2020 right now, uh-huh. where anything is possible. Oh, it uh, is. Do, do, do you see Jim Harbaugh trading the maize and blue for the Honolulu blue? 
Uh, he's getting what nine million a year right now at Michigan. He's yeah. what he's gonna get uh, downgraded to coach in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jim, we're gonna give you six and a half to coach in Detroit. He's yeah, like, who is this? I, 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 like, I don't think. <laughs> I, I, I don't think he's going to get uh, less than what he's making at Michigan no, if he's going back to the pros. No, no, that's dumb. No, I don't want to see his khakis anywhere near Ford Field because um, of the tragedy that is the Michigan football program. Yes. I am not uh, too enthused of having him right. come in and uh, into a, the situation that Detroit's in, which needs a, a different type of coach we'll all talk about after your list is uh, completed. Yeah. Obviously, uh, so we we moved up to the top two here, and anyone that watched our uh, Instagram live reaction video kind of know where we're going with this. Uh, It's the San Francisco defensive coordinator, Robert Sala, uh, just happens to be one of the odds on favorite as of right now to land the gig uh, for the Detroit Lions. Obviously, Michigan native, Dearborn native. His whole family was here. Uh, went to the school in Michigan. Got his first coaching job at Michigan State. Obviously, a Michigan homegrown uh, coaching talent. Obviously, making his name really stand out over there in uh, the Bay Area, uh, which is now like under quarantine lockdown. And so now they have to play their home games in Arizona which is mm-hmm. kind of weird. So, yeah, uh, Jake, Robert Sala is uh, obviously everyone is pushing him towards that uh, uh, Lions job. Mm-hmm. Where I- I Richard Sherman, uh, the great cornerback, uh, said that Robert needs to get the, the, the Detroit guy, the, the, the Detroit job. He needs that mm-hmm. Detroit job. Detroit needs to give it to him. So, but I kind of like it, even if they, I know we're going with a, unproven head coach you know but you know he comes from a, a a winning organization you know which which knows on what it's like to rebuild you know uh mm-hmm. because, because a couple of years ago the 49ers were terrible so and just last year they went to the super bowl so mm-hmm. he knows what it takes to turn a, a franchise around when it comes the when it comes to that and not only that he has connections where he can bring his uh, offensive coordinator over there in uh, San Francisco, uh, Mike LaFleur, not Matt LaFleur, but Mike LaFleur, who is a brother of Matt LaFleur, with him to uh, with them to the Lions. Uh, Mike LaFleur, who also is a Michigan native as well. Jake, would you like that? Uh, two points. No. Yeah. And let me explain why. Uh, because yeah. just no, because really, it's, it's being really one point, but okay. Yeah. And then, then my second point is uh, typical lines. Okay. Because for this reason only uh, is because everybody's pushing for it, for this to happen because of reasons that are not f- always football related. Oh, he's a local guy. Oh, Michigan state. Oh, bring him back to Dearborn. Oh, he's such a cool guy. Oh, this and that. Yeah, he's done some things with the uh, 49ers defense um, that are good, and he's working with scraps because they got demolished this year. Uh, but s- still, first thing you get is everybody swooning over, oh, yeah, bring in the local guy. He's going to be yeah. our guy. What is this, yeah. Michigan? <laughs> he's a Michigan really? man. What, what happened when you, when you brought your messiah? Oh, he's going to come back. <laughs> He's gonna, he's gonna be the guy. Yeah, but, yeah, championships yeah, but, ever. Yeah. This, this sounds exactly the same. It's like, yeah, oh, but, this is yeah, gonna be our guy. Our he's local. He went to Michigan, but he wasn't yeah, born in Michigan. I know, but this sounds like exactly the same thing. We're pushing this guy. Everybody's pushing this guy for the job. <laughs> oh yeah, he's from here. Bring him in. He's gonna be the guy. Didn't we just bring in the scientist guy, the unproven guy? The rocket, gonna, yeah, the rocket. Yeah, scientist. who's yeah. the new guy who's going to give us his philo- philosophy and take on yeah. how it should be done and how did that work out? Cool. This might work out with uh, with him. Yeah. And he might be the be- you know the best uh, defensive coach to be a head coach. He might be the next logical step up for him. Mm-hmm. I'm you know I'd say no just because everybody's like swooning over him and I'd I'd want you know a b- better plan of what he would do maybe uh, that you don't get that until he actually gets hired but um uh, there, there's I, right now for Detroit I think I have a different direction but I'll wait for your number one okay well 
Our number one is uh, it's pretty much everyone's number one uh, who has a head coaching vacancy, and that's uh, Kansas City Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy. Uh, obviously, you know his experience uh, changing that franchise offensively around. Obviously, under the tutelage of the great Andy Reid, who is oh. by far one of the best. NFL head coaches in history, you know, as so obviously do you do the Lions do pretty much the same thing instead of going under the Belichick tree, they go under the Andy Reid tree mm -hmm. and, and, and they and they make him uh, the next uh, head coach for the Detroit Lions. Exactly what I just repeated with uh, your number two pick. No, I'd repeat with number one pick because you, 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 you for what, exactly what you just said, you just Picking apples from one another tree, which has nothing to do with you know not, not that big of a significance of their success because who's the main coach there? Well, yeah, it's not Belichick, but it's Andy Reid. So you're right. you know it's right. that's whose ideas are successful. Just because you're the offensive coordinator, don't you know you might be used to that program, you might be learning from that program, but you're not that program. So mm -hmm. personally, and I love your list. It's a great list. A lot of options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would go with full uh, with head coaching experience over um, the new guys, the new fresh talent, because we, we've done it. And I think what this Lions need is an established name. And I don't have them for you right now. I don't know who's available, who can unretire and come and coach. Mm -hmm. um, but but I would go uh, the route of someone like a Jay Gruden, uh, who went into Vegas. And and is establishing that brand again. I would I would do something like that. Find somebody who's had that experience, head coaching experience, yep. and give them that opportunity to once again yeah. establish, build some solid foundation in Detroit. So then we can go out uh, and in the next five years, and if we have to uh, uh, work to improve those solid foundations, because I don't think Detroit has any. You must mean John Gruden, right? Whatever. That's what I said. That's what I, what I say. You said Jay Gruden, which is oh, his brother. Yeah. yeah. John Gruden. And, yeah. and, and, and was. Uh, My coach. bad. Yeah, that's fine. But which was a head Who coach am I? In, in, in Washington. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you, you were talking about co coaches with experience that maybe want to uh, want to get back into football. What about someone like Jim Caldwell? Uh, Caldwell come back. You we're said you want experience, we're not, and we're you not, want we're not recycling that guys that. respect. Yeah, I'm we're just not saying. Yeah. Should have kept them. Should have kept them. Yeah, I know. Should have kept them. Yeah. One kept year. Him. One more year. Yeah. So then, yeah. Got after that. I, I I know we get all excited talking about the head coach, but we really can't put the 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 cart in front of the horse. Or how's that saying? 2020, we could go backwards. We could. We could. Uh, a horse in front of a cart or cart in front of a horse. <laughs> uh, so, Jake, uh, before that, we got to have the Lions have to have a GM. Yep. And so here are Albert Breers uh, of Sports Illustrated uh, list of replacements that could uh, be the next Detroit Lions general manager. It started off with the Cowboys VP of player personnel, Will McClay. Uh, he may be impossible to get out of Dallas at, at this point with how the Joneses regard and take care of him. But if he were to decide to leave uh, North Texas uh, with his varied experience in scouting, coaching, and, and, and athletics, uh, he'll be at the top of the list, maybe because it's close by and, he, and, he's, and maybe it's because he's close by. He, can, he might consider Houston, but... Will McClay of the Cowboys. That's one that he thinks. Next one, Eagles assistant director of player personnel, Ian Cunningham, uh, learned at the heels of ex-Ravens GM Ozzie Newsom and worked on the worked on the college and pro side in Baltimore, eventually winding up with the all-important Southeast as, a, as an area. He got to Philly as a college scouting director. He's been promoted since, and the Eagles had to block him from going to the Jets with uh, Douglas. So, uh, Eagles Cunningham, Eagles uh, player personnel guy Ian Cunningham. Uh, next one that he mentioned here is Saints VP and assistant GM of pro personnel Terry 
uh, uh, Fontenot. Uh, Fontenot uh, helped uh, to construct the best roster in football in years. He worked hand in hand with Jeff Ireland to run the team to, to run the team scouting department. You won't find many guys who don't really respect Fontenot. So. I, you know what? I'm seeing a lot of good programs that uh, teams that these people are coming from, and I think that's important. You want to bring in someone from a winning culture, kind of like the Patriots did. But you know, obviously, we knew who was really running that show in New England when it comes to that. Uh, mm-hmm. And next one on the list is Raider Assistant Director of Player Personnel, uh, Dewan Daniels, uh, and Daniel spent well over a decade in New England. So here you go. You might be uh, looking at him. And has quickly found success with Raiders GM Mike Mayock. Uh, he might be a few years few years away, but he absolutely has a bright future and well thought of, thought of in the two places he worked. So maybe something in the future. Keep an eye on that name. And finally, there's the Cardinals, Arizona Cardinals Director of Player Personnel, Quinton Harris. Uh, was seen as a rising star until the team got old and collapsed a few years ago. Now that Arizona's bounced back, it would hardly be shocked to see his name starting to circulate again. So that's just a couple of names to keep in mind. Um, we heard of another one, uh, 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 Ed Dobbs from the Indianapolis, Indianapolis Colts, who is regarded as like the name to uh, potentially be the next GM. Of an of an of an NFL franchise, obviously built a great defense over there in uh, Indianapolis. So, Jake, who do you like, or who, or what kind of names have you been hearing? You know, I, I like that because everybody you just mentioned comes from a, a winning uh, and and uh, most of them from a re, uh, organizations that I've rebuilt not right. too long ago, and yeah. they've gone through experience of drafting properly, which is key for me. Uh, everybody you mentioned drafts well. Even Dallas drafts uh, drafted uh, pretty well. Um, you know, it's it's every single one of those places did the draft properly. And now I don't care who we get. I want someone who's come from that background of from the bottom up through the draft. And every single person you just mentioned, that's what they've done. So it really doesn't matter as long as it's someone who's done it. And then we all know. Uh, well, the one we just had from New England, they drafted differently than everybody else, and that wasn't even up uh, most of the time up to um, their personnel department. It was up to the head coach. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm cool with anybody there. That was a good list too. Good, good. All right, so yeah, just give you guys a couple things to think about when it comes to uh, uh, the NFL and the Lions and pretty much what Sheila and non not a football guy Rod Wood is uh is planning to look at when uh, they start to uh, the process to interview GM and potentially bring in a new head coach can't wait for that press conference so mm-hmm. they, oh yeah well their their zoom was so lively you might as well I that. know their zoom that Woo! was private energy only six people and, she, and she'll look great and look like a empty uh, warehouse Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, you can't go to the facility and stand at a podium. Guess not. Right. I don't know. So, well, is, is, I, I got something Lions related that I oh, would yes, like. Please, I would please, like to please. throw throw at you because I got a yes. hot take. So let's do hot yes. take city. Okay, hot take right hot now. Take. Okay. Um, Matthew Stafford. Yes. I have an idea about okay. what the Lions should do, and I'm going to explain it. And I want your take on it because I really want your opinion on on Stafford. And uh, I'm going to give you mine first. You you value my opinion. I like that. Yes, I do. I I need it because it balances mine out until you agree with me. And that just defeats the purpose. (laughs) All right. Um, Matthew Stafford is still here. Yes. And as much as I appreciate Matthew Stafford and what he's done and uh, all the things he's done for the Lions, I have his jerseys. I think it's time to go. I think it's time to take Matthew Stafford, wrap him up for Christmas, and ship him out. Now, why? Well, it's been too long. He's wasted majority of his prime, all of his prime, with this club. And 
we haven't won anything with him. Is it his fault? Mostly no. Is it some of his fault? Yes, some of it is his fault. But he should be looking for greener pastures to win things, not to stay loyal and make his money. He can make money other places. How much? How many hundreds of millions do you still need? Um, so, Matthew Stafford, it's time to go. As much as I appreciate you, I think it's time for you to move on. You, you've done what you can. Detroit, once again, ruined a grip, good player. But I think it's time to go. Now, what should happen when he goes, in my opinion? Trade him. Trade him, trade him, trade him. Push him into Dallas. Uh, I've been saying they don't have a QB. Come on now. We know this. And they might not have a QB next year either. You never know what might happen. Their situation sucks. And there's so many other uh, football clubs up there that need a quarterback as stable as Stafford, even though with a broken back. He's still there. He's still doing his mm -hmm. thing. He's slinging the rock. Um, right. Trade him. And I would go as low as a two and a three. We need it. Wow. Don't forget the Lions only have five draft picks next year. In, mm -hmm. in April, in 2021, mm -hmm. next draft, we only have five. You cannot build a team with five draft picks. You need seven to nine, and that'll be a good draft. So mm -hmm. Stafford, on the way, I would do it as soon as possible. You have a $3 million backup right now. Utilize that. You fucking paid him $3 million a year to be a backup. Utilize your $3 million guy. Stafford, on the way out, get something for him. I don't give a shit what. Two and a four, two and a three. Two and two sixes. I don't give a shit. Build uh, through the draft and your head. Give your new head coach and uh, new GM something to work with. Who is going to want to take this job with five damn draft picks this year? And and, and it's what your starting position, if you mirac miraculously win some games, drafting what eleventh? What? Who would want this job? But anyway, that's right. my opinion. That's my hot take on Stafford. He needs to go. He needs to go now. Draft capital. If you want to do this properly, that's how you start. What do you think, Eric? Right. No, I, I, I totally agree with you when it comes to that because he's been in this organization for 12 years, going on 13. Um, and he's a proven good quality quarterback. Obviously, he needs the, the team around him. And there are plenty of teams that – you know, are maybe like missing a piece, you know, at the quarterback position to get over that hump. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not too sure if there are many of those teams still around. Um, but I, I look at teams where they could, you know, uh, they, they could look for a trade as more as a transition for them to, uh, you know, still remain competitive while waiting to become younger. Mm -hmm. And by younger, I mean like drafting a younger quarterback. I look at someone like who who they thought that they had a, a potential franchise quarterback. Obviously, he didn't fit that situation. Uh, and I look at someone like Sam Darnold of the New York Jets, right? Who who came in with a lot of hype and and he has talent, no doubt about it. But mm -hmm. I can see them obviously unloading him if they have a chance to take uh, a Trevor Lawrence. In the upcoming oh, for draft. sure. Yeah, and so, I think we mentioned that on our live. Yeah, that yeah. was your idea. Yeah. It, exactly. And so, like, if the Lions were to move on from Stafford, you know, I don't want to go through this whole, you know, I call it the Jeff Garcia era of Detroit Lions quarterback, where it's like Jeff Garcia one week, and it's Dante Culpepper, and then we're just bringing, oh, out, God. bringing off and bringing out every Tom, Dick, and Harry off the street to play quarterback. The ghost of Dante. Oh, yeah, Dante Culpepper. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. Oh, God, so, yeah. yeah, obviously, you know, Matthew Stafford did all he could in Detroit. Obviously, there's so many avenues you can take. You can blame the, 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 the coaching. You can blame he didn't have enough talent around him. You can blame the, the GM, you know, didn't uh, give them enough weapons. You could blame the ownership, the culture of Detroit, the whole lack of winning mentality. And I can see where someone like this, just who you want to see succeed and win and actually win a championship, I would I would be thrilled if Stafford got a chance to hoist uh, the Lombardi Trophy one day, even if it's not with Detroit. Because I know how much the guy puts out there and he puts, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He shows up every week and and he does the best he can you know so even if it's somewhere like I, obviously i don't want to see him go to like a rival team like the bears 
but even if the Bears like made a, made him an offer or something that's where the Bears, I look at a team that they're on that cusp. They have that great defense. They just obviously mm-hmm. need a, 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 a capable starting quarterback. That's obviously, true. you don't want to see him in your own division, uh, you know, every other week. But still, you know, I want to see him a chance where he can go and succeed. Maybe a place like San Francisco where, because honestly, Jake, if Stafford was on that team last year, they win that Super Bowl. I think probably. it gives them. A, uh, they they probably give them a good chance. He's got defense, young young coach. You know, great offensive weapons over there in San Francisco. He gets away from the cold Detroit winters or Michigan winters, and and his wife can do Instagram videos so, uh, praising uh, <laughs> San Francisco uh, 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 a small business over there. Yeah, yeah, they're pooping yeah. on the streets. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, well yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see. That's that's. Uh, I wanted to get out there because, as much as Stafford fans we are, we'd rather see him go and uh, have our everybody gets a fresh start, us and him. So that'll be good. All right. Anything else in sports? Because I'm skipping over the um, college football part. Oh yeah, the co- yeah. Why you don't want to talk about your Michigan Wolverines? It's okay. It's okay. Oh okay. Uh, <laughs> Nobody's hey, gonna. Who knows what's just, gonna happen? The season's just a such a mess. Note, just a little side note. Uh, your, my Michigan State Spartans beat an un, uh, undefeated team uh, in Northwestern. So yeah, uh-huh. kudos to them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, can't wait to make. You know, are you gonna make the uh, college championship this year? No, no, no. no, no, no but no. hey, it's it's a first year head coach. You know. You, you celebrate as excuses. much as you Let's can. Oh, excuses. You want to talk about excuses. <laughs> Next year, be like, he doesn't have his guys yet. You're uh, he three. Doesn't. He's he just working on he his doesn't. guys. He doesn't. You're four. Oh, he's still working on his guys. A first year head coach beat, came into Michigan Stadium and, and just slapped you guys around. No, oh, we have a seventh year coach who still hasn't figured it out. So, <laughs> he, still nah, has, that he still has to beat his uh, no, number one rival. It doesn't Ohio matter, State. really. Yeah. yeah. Go no, blue, absolutely. right? Yeah. Go blue, exactly. Yeah, blue, blue who, blue who. Yeah. Uh, so. uh, just a little uh, one quick basketball note, uh, Jake. Uh, one of the ball kids has been signed by the Detroit Pistons, a ten-day, uh, pretty much contract, more like a tryout. Uh, Le- Leangelo Ball has been signed by the Detroit Pistons. Uh, your thoughts on that, Jake? Oh, he played in the Australian league, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Basketball, because he couldn't get into college here, or something like that. Um, yeah, th- don't care. Whatever, practice yeah. squad. But I'm, I'm <laughs> so pumped about the Pistons. I, ha- I yeah. my Pistons yeah. hat is in my studio right now yeah. in the uh, Shoot Entertainment Studios. It's out here. I have my new uh, Pistons hat upstairs. I'm excited. This team's making moves. After moves, after they're, they're like moving people, they just got they already got rid of one of those centers. I'm, I'm excited, they're just moving people, absolutely. It's, I think it's gonna be really great, uh, fun to watch at least for the first month or two. You well, know, yeah, I want them to lose and I want them to get yeah, a better graphic absolutely. and then start building. And I want a championship in like five years or be at least yeah. be in the finals, yeah, like soon conference. I, 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 I like it, especially you know, Troy Weaver's guy doesn't mess around and he will make a move if he deems that it's best for his team. And I like how aggressive he's been already. So, yeah, definitely excited to watch some uh, Pistons hoops uh, this this month. They start this yeah. month. It's he hasn't great. stopped making a move since the draft. No, it's he's, amazing. He's Troy. He's, he's a weaver and dealing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, wheel and deal and weaver. Uh, so, no, that's good. Uh, sidebar, quick little – I want to get your thoughts on that massive trade that went down between the Washington Wizards and Houston Rockets. Houston Rockets sending uh, former all-star, you know, Russell, Russell Westbrook uh, to uh, Washington for John Wall going back the other way to Houston. What do you think of that trade? Don't care. None of them are relevant. Uh, well, they'll get knocked out in the John first Wall or second was, round of. Uh, if, if, if it wasn't for his in, his his injuries, uh, John Wall is definitely a, a top tier talent. Yeah, no, neither team's making any impact on anything. Um, so, yeah, whatever. Okay, okay. Well, just your, just want to get your thoughts. Okay, yeah, uh, so J- J- Jake's not a big uh, Westbrook or Wall fan. So. No, what West? Somebody was saying Westbrook's going to come to Detroit. I'm like, eh, okay, yeah. Oh. I, as for talent wise, I take him. Yeah. But I don't know if it would be a nice media circus. 
But sure. I don't think this it's the um the attitude they want have to have in this building when they're rebuilding from scratch. So exactly. You don't need a All superstar right. yet. Exactly. Well, who knows? Maybe this Killian Hayes will be the next guy. Hey, whatever. Trade Blake Griffin. Sure. Yeah. Hey, speaking of trades, that's the one we should also do. There you go. Move them. All oh, right. Yeah. So, Jake, I believe you got some tunage for us. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's get to some music today. We're going to get to some interesting music. What I have today is a, uh, a band out of Langley, B.C. Okay. So, Canadian, Canadian band um, called... Uh, the Cole Pantanod Band with uh, the new track, Are You Happy Now? What, um, what this band is, it has both uh, elect, uh, can't read. Electric, <laughs> yeah, I know. Electric uh, blues alongside soulful folk, country pop, and rock sounds. It, it's, it is a little folksy and country ish on the side, but. It's really cool. Their their new album came out on July twenty fourth of this year, uh, because you know it's just a good time to release music this year when everybody's home and quarantined. So that was a good time. Um, but no, their their track that we're gonna play for you guys today, uh, I've been listening to for a little bit, um, and it's called "Are You Happy Now?" Yeah, very very countryish, uh, very folkish. Uh, you guys will love it. We'll add this to our playlist. So here is the Cole. Pantanod band with Are You Happy Now right here on the ADG podcast. No 
But to tell the truth, I hate that nine to five. I just can't live to work like most of us have got to do, and the pride just sees us through. That was Are You Happy Now by the Cole Pantanod Band right here on the ADG Podcast. Hope you like that. Uh, you know, fun music to listen to. Give you a little break between us uh, talking nonsense all the time. Mm-hmm. Great track. Uh, you know, six minutes of relaxed time before you get back to us. Uh, the yap in your yeah. ear. But yeah, exactly. there you go. So there wow, you go. Love Plenty of good things. Uh, Jake, I want to get your thoughts on that. Something that just occurred or was just put out yesterday okay. uh when it comes down to i know we're big fans of movies and tv shows since we do our movie review uh but big news out of the warner brothers camp uh came out yesterday warner brothers known for releasing big titles so mm-hmm. they decided that in 2021 mm-hmm. uh which is uh, a little less than a month away yep. uh they're going to be releasing uh, all their their complete 2021 lineup in theaters, but they're going to release them on HBO Max the same huh. day. Huh. And we're talking we're talking about pretty big movies. We're talking about the uh, Matrix Four. We're talking about um, the Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Uh, Suicide Dune. from the theaters, yeah. Yeah, the Suicide Squad, uh, Dune. Uh, Space Jam 2, and we talked uh, about we talked about this movie last podcast. Tom mm-hmm. and Jerry. Tom and Jerry, yeah. And 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 Jake, I know he's so excited for this movie. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, Godzilla versus King. King. Oh fuck yeah, book it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Go, there's out of all those movies, that's the best one that's in my the best opinion. One. And, um, and the the worst one is uh, the the LeBron. Uh, oh, piece of Jam. trash of Space yeah. Jam, garbage. Yeah. You know, just throw it on the toilet. I can't wait to butcher that movie. I can't wait to, <laughs> can't wait, can't wait to do that. It'll be awesome. Oh, you know, that's, that's, yeah, that's I've, interesting, I've, Darren. I've, 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 yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna be. Uh, th- that was breaking big news uh, all across the uh, the Twitterverse and uh, social media. Uh, another big thing is, I think we talked about this or we posted it that uh, Wonder Woman 80 in 1984 is going to be released on HBO Max on Christmas Day. Cool. So I can't think of a better way to celebrate the Christmas than watch the new Wonder Woman movie. Uh, I don't know about that, but it's it's a good thing that it comes out on, on your it TV. It gives you something to do. It gives you something it's new cr- to do. Hang out with your family. It's it's Christmas. With what? Oh, I'm sorry. Darren does it every day. Never mind. Over Zoom? Yeah. Hey, uh, I, love I know. Uh, yeah, you need, to, you need to like take a break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, with th- with that, it's yeah, it's a great thing. But I don't think people are actually going to go to theaters. What's going to happen? And I, I know this for sure right now. These movies are going to come out on HBO Max or whatever. 
and they're going to get pirated so much easier, oh so much God, quicker yes. <laughs> than... Uh, Especially us here in Canada, which we don't oh, have yeah. HBO Max. I know yeah. they put some of the stuff on Crave, but if you don't have Crave, yeah, everyone's going to be pirating. You have to go to wherever they get their uh, illegal streams from and that's right. do it that, We don't do recommend it, it, but if no, you do, no, that's where you're no. going to get it. <laughs> there you go. Jake says, like, Jake says, I don't recommend it, but if you're going to do it, you do it. Do it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. But yeah, if you if you if you like it when it comes out on uh, on Blu-ray, if anybody still buys those or digital copy, download and buy it. There you Ooh, go. Nice. Yeah. Ah, whatever. I like to have a physical copy. Why? Um, I don't know. It's it's digital. It, it, what if something so, crashes digitally and erases so, it? So you can so you can save it, or, or you can save it and sell it at, at a yard sale. That's why you want it. Maybe, but I've dropped uh, backup drives before and lost many things. Really? So, wow. Oh, yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. I recommend physical copies or backs up, backups. Okay. Or whatever. Well, but Jake whatever. Is, Jake is living in, in 1997. Okay. <laughs> and, and I'm okay with that. I need he some. Probably, uh, he might he, he, take that. He, he probably still has all of his VHS tapes. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because uh, uh, one, of, one of my friends online, uh, he put a quote on there, he, he, something about, um, I'm, I'm old enough for, to have my. Um, uh disc man on i'm like yeah mine still has that three second uh non-skip on it okay so i just lost half the audience uh and and these this expensive ones yeah yeah. well everyone in my age group did and every and uh, you had a three second delay for a skip so when you rode on the bus like i did to school (laughs) it wouldn't skip when it hit (laughs) bumps So so when Jake was a young young lad bumping uh, Biggie and Tupac, yeah, you know, in 1995. All, that's it. Yeah, yeah, all those uh, you know the West Coast uh, was it the West Coast uh, Mafia or whatever they're called. Well, you know what? You know how old I am. When I used to get excited, when my friends yeah. used to give me mix mix CDs with like oh. all the tracks on one mix CD. That was the uh, or beginning of the age of the burning of the CDs. Crazy, yes. four oh, times but, speed on my drive. I'm gonna burn a CD in like 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and there was always that one guy in high school or grade school, if you're that had, you know, had all the pirated CDs and movies <laughs> that were in there, and he would sell them at lunchtime, you know, for like five bucks or whatever, you know. Yep, <laughs> Breaking out that catalog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big huge uh, a CD book of like all yep. these CDs in there, like. Yeah, which one do you want? Yeah, I got that. You know, just wheeling and dealing at yeah. uh, at, in, at in those high school uh, cafeterias. Exactly. Hilarious. Hilarious. Good times. All uh, right. So you, so you got a movie trailer, right? Yes. So, Jake, if if you love the movie Sniper and if you love Taken, you're going to love this movie. And if those of you are like, huh? Yeah. It's a movie called The Marksman and it comes out next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, directed by Robert Lawrence and has the fantastic legendary char- uh, uh, character actor Liam Neeson and he pretty much plays um, pretty much plays a, a rancher in Arizona uh, that is a border town that he must help a young boy escape a Mexican drug cartel so this is like everything that Shooter, sniper, any any movie that involves a gun, and combines it with Liam Neeson and Taken, because he has that Liam Neeson voice that only Liam Neeson can do. And you know, I look at I I watch the trailer. It looks pretty good, Jake. Not gonna lie, it looks pretty good. Mm. Um, maybe maybe it's maybe it's because I'm a Liam Neeson fan, and those maybe. Taken movies are are pretty cool, are maybe. pretty awesome. Maybe yeah. there's a dare but bias I, there. I'm not. Yeah, it's a darn bias. It's my opinion. I'm not. I'm not being paid by the studio or nothing to. Give we don't know that. We don't, we don't know what you're no, taking you're, on the you're side. Not, you're not. You're not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Trust me. Uh, yeah, but I, I give this a serious uh, three and a half out of five. Oh shit. Okay, I'm not generous like that, unfortunately. I know. Because um, I, I watched the entire trailer. I was like, oh cool. I watched the whole movie. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> literally that two and a half minutes, I'm like, oh, this is a good movie. Oh, this is what happens. <laughs> Oh, this is the ending scene. Okay, cool. So I just oh, finished the movie in two and a half minutes. So if we, I don't know, the, the trailer sucked for me because it gave everything away. So you know, what? don't see the trailer 
but go see the movie because there you go. The, the trailer is is cool until it starts giving away everything that happens. I'm like, oh come on, like I want to see this develop. I don't need it all summarized and uh, it's like cliff notes for movies. I'm like, oh cool, cool. This is what happens. It literally goes in sequence. Oh okay, that's the scene. Oh that's the end scene. Oh this is what happens. The <laughs> okay fuck okay. Lots of shooting. Okay yeah I'm done. Cool movie. Just watched it in two and a half minutes. So no it, it's 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 obviously it's Liam Neeson doing Liam Neeson things, um, being all calm and uh, calm as shit and shooting people. So, <laughs> I, 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 I just think of that Key and Peel sketch uh, where they're like the, 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 the car valets and they talk mm-hmm. about movies. It's like, mm-hmm. you see Liam Neeson in them wolves? The wolves got Liam Neeson. <laughs> it's constantly go back and forth. It, 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 if you look it up on YouTube, just type in Key and Peel, Liam Neeson. It's like the first one that pops up. It's a great Very show. Fun. Love it. Yes. Um, but uh, no, I, I'd give this movie like two and a half out of five. Okay. Okay. Because the, the trailer ruined it for me, and uh, I, I might see it, I might find it on HBO Max. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all, all, all the but, good shows that uh, are out there you know. on HBO Max, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. But no, it's, like it. it's gonna be it's gonna be good. Uh, so speaking of good, Jake, I believe that you have this week's top five for us. Oh. God. Yeah, and my top five is gonna uh, throw us off the cliff for the for the AG podcast. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna take a we're gonna take a dive into totally something opposite that makes no sense. But I like throwing you guys a curveball every single time I do a top five because it has nothing to do with the show. It's some random shit, and that's how I roll. Okay, Darren, top five. And I swear, if you make a joke here. Top five oldest living things on Earth. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have so Ooh. many to choose from. Ooh, so yeah, to choose okay. From. Hold, hold, hold it there until we're done. Okay. okay. Uh, one of them I can't pronounce, but we're going we're gonna to walk through this. <clears throat> okay. So, number five. Horseshoe crab. 445 million years. Wow. wow. Yeah. Been a, those things have been around for a while. I don't even know that, what a, is it like an actual crab, like with claws. Google, Google. That that's that is your Google question for the day. Google, <laughs> uh, horseshoe crab. Horseshoe crab. Yeah. There you go. They've been around for 445 million years. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Pretty gnarly. Right. Yeah. Number four. I like this one. I'm a big fan of number four. Sponge. Sponge. Like sponge, a sponge. Yeah. Like a kitchen sponge. Yeah. sponge. Re- no, real sponges come from the ocean. If you didn't know that, uh, I can't help you. Uh, no, not the plastic shit that's in your sink right now. <laughs> the actual sponge, which is a real sponge, which you people still use. If anybody's been to Key West, uh, mm-hmm. they sell them on the side. They're amazing. Uh, 580 million years they've been around. Is that was the, the namesake for when they came up with the name Sponge Cake? Drive from that. I think I think the consistency of, of a fluffiness and absorbance, yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Number three, jellyfish. Over five. Not really sure, but five hundred plus million years they've been around. Jellyfish. jellyfish. Yeah. Finally, finally, something I know. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. Now, number two, I can't pronounce, but we're gonna have a good shot at it. Number two is a nautilus, nautilus, something like that. It's the only shelled cephalopod. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that is. I, I will Google this for myself eventually. Over 500 million years old. See if you can find the phonetics spelling of Yeah. C E P H A L O P O D. Whatever that is. A cephalopod? Cephalopod. There you go. Cephalopod. Whatever. So yeah, those are the number two, five, plus over 500 million years they've been around. And number one, cyanobacteria survived every major extinction for 2.8 billion years. Wow. No bad bacteria is, but I'm assuming it's something crazy and not available uh, in our li- li- living and breathing air, uh, surroundings, probably okay. in the ocean somewhere. There you so go. Probably. So probably doesn't have COVID. No COVID. No COVID. 
No, cold, awesome. cold, cold. It's pretty new. Cold, but there you go. Free. Five oldest living things on Earth. And no, it's not, uh, you know, random jokes. It's mostly <laughs> shit that's in the sea because we don't get to it. That's why it survives for so long. We kill there everything. You there, there you go. go. Top five. Good. Love it. Great job. Right. Uh, cool. Uh, what else? Yeah. Uh, just uh, one thing that's going around, not going around, that's gonna going down this weekend is that they're going to have the reverse Santa Claus parade uh, taking place this Saturday at St. Clair College. Mm, that's uh, a bunch of but Go ahead. What? It's, it, it's <laughs> something to do. Obviously, when it's from 6 to 9, and mm-hmm. how they had it set up, they learned from other places that had, like, reverse parades, and a lot of them were were very clusterfuck. There was a lot of shit show happening. So they came up with the idea where you go on a website, you book your time, you type in your license plate, and then you show up at your designated time to go through it so you don't have a back, you know, traffic and all that stuff, which I kind of like the idea. So, yeah, I, I guess it starts at St. Clair College, it goes all the way around the campus. Everything's going to be out there. People can drive by at a nice, casual pace. They get to see the kids. The, they get to see Santa Claus. All good times. So there you go. But I guess yeah. it, it was such a big thing that they already sold out all their spots. So mm-hmm. uh, hence, hence my call on the bullshit because I have to register to drive through something. Get the fuck out of here. Really? Here, Jacob, register to go see Santa Claus with the kids. Yeah, oh, yeah. cool. I can't just show up? No, you Why can't. can't I just show up? Because it's a free can't. damn country. I want to drive through it. <laughs> I don't have a specific time that I might be available. People are busy. We work. We do things. Yeah. I, You know, really? That's limiting. Why can't some kids see it and some kids can't? I'll get out of my car if I can walk around. You can't do that. Uh, very, well, very that, that's, that's my problem with this whole COVID I, bullshit. Things I can or can't do. I know it's it, it, it's the world against Jake, and we all know. It's not it. even my rants, and, and <laughs> it's I'm already getting rants. annoyed by I, this. I, this I brought out I brought out your rants already. So yeah, no, so I so so I'm gonna uh, like I'll go. I I signed up, so I'll okay, give you. Yeah, a, 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 yeah, I do. It's it's literally like right down We're the street the fucking from my line. house. It's like right down the street from my house. So like, why wouldn't I go? Exactly. Exactly. You should have walked. Yeah. In spectate from far away. <laughs> To bring some binoculars and all right. Exactly. So I'd be like, what up, Santa? Send send pictures, stream it live. So for all those people that couldn't I, get in because you know they're locked out, I not everybody's all hip and registering online can also enjoy it if you there stream you it. There you go. Stay there tuned to the ADG Instagram. I might do uh, show a couple videos on you there. You better. better stream story. that shit live as you're driving. Wait you, um, you know, when you're waving at What? You're going to appreciate all the floats? That's for yeah. children. You wave at Santa too? Hey. Hey, Ask for your Christmas, Christmas. I'm Christmas. I'm a kid at heart. You know, quit being such a Scrooge, you know? Jeez. It's all about balance there. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> balance. Balance good and bad right there. Pretty much. Uh, it, it, it's it's what you get on this podcast. You get a little bit of everything, but... Uh, you, you get something from this podcast? I don't know. I don't know, but you know what? Who knows? Maybe lion's we'll... In, in lion's news. You get a lot of lion's news, so if you like that, then you get plenty of that. For sure. Uh, Jake, I want to hear your rant because you have a great rant for us. Um, I, I do have one, but I have a news story that I want to talk to you about first because I think you'll find this interesting. Um, you, you like stupid bullshit, like registering for parades. Love so. stupid bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that you might be interested in buying. Darren loves bullshit. Okay. <laughs> that should be a new segment for us. Uh, it should be. Uh, it should be. Um, it would unfortunately be half the shit I would do <laughs> that I would hate. Um, okay. So there's a painting that is expected to sell for three and a half million dollars. Um, but it's just a white piece of paper. Uh, when you look closer, though, on that painting, the there is uh, text from a... Um, a civil rights activist that is barely visible on this painting. It's literally like there's script, but you can't actually make it out. So the artist made this painting, put that script on there, and you can barely see it, and it's going to sell for three and a half million. So that's that's a thing. 
if he can get three and a half million for uh, a piece of paper with some text on it, good mm-hmm. for him. And that that just tells you that there is a sucker everywhere. That there's there's a sucker for everything. I guess these days. So uh, yeah, Darren, I don't wake up in the morning. I have three and a half million. I want to throw away today. What should I do it on? <laughs> but but let's say if he's like a Saudi prince and he ha- and he has like billions of dollars, like what's three million to him? No, that's true. But you're gonna hang up a blank canvas with yeah. some writing you can't read on your wall. Just so what you can hell? say, yeah, I bought this for three million. You know, it's hmm. like no big deal. Yeah, oh, it's so weird. But that, I thought yeah. that would be interesting. Some some out there for for the people to go fig- find and figure out. I like it. No, wow, that's yeah. good. So obviously that wasn't your rant today. So no. What is, what is your my, rant? My, let's, yeah. let's hear it. Is, uh, my and, and and is it Christmas related? Is of it course, it's shopping Christmas. related. Of course it is. Oh, oh. Here we go. <laughs> of course it is because my dumbass does things the hard way sometimes. And uh, when you and I were Instagramming live, I was in the middle of my entire shopping experience, as um, you probably saw. Now. The joys of me driving into the city of Windsor, you've heard before. Um, it's it's not, it's not a fun, yeah, it's not a fun experience. Now try doing this when one, there's a quote unquote pandemic and people are buying shit, and two, uh, Christmas shopping, uh, which I don't do, so I don't give a shit about that. But I actually have to go get things at the store sometimes and venture out into the world of Walmart. And venture out into the parking lots where people pretend they know how to drive. And, and you know, travel the roads with some of these maniacs uh, like Walker Road and people uh, that travel that way. So when I was out last weekend to uh, do all this cool stuff and before the actual live session that we had on our Instagram page, um, what I always get out of driving in this city is what, why? Why do I put myself through this? Because I can just chill where I am in the county and not bother with any of this or go through Amazon and do whatever. But unfortunately, I can't get butter and a lot of things that I need sometimes through uh, Amazon shopping. So I have to go and see people. Now, first things first, you know Walker Road is trash on the weekends. You know it. Why would you make it worse by one, driving under the speed limit? Two, holding up traffic in the left lane, going slower than the right lane. And three, not utilizing the things attached to your fucking steering wheel called the turn signals. That's one. Two, parking lot fucking rules. You know, they're there for a reason. Like something called the lines. Park between them. Two, when I park far away, super far away from everybody for because I don't like any of you, uh, don't park next to me. There's a reason I'm parked far away. I don't want you near me. I don't want you anywhere near whatever I'm driving. I'd rather walk than be any uh, anybody parked next to me and ding my car, which happens almost all the time. And two, the way you people drive in and out of parking spots and through spots and across spots and try to park is appalling. And I'd rather take my chances walking through all of you and try to get not hit by any of you in the parking lot and carry my shit far away, then go through that every time. And the best part going into the store. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. There, you know, there's lines still that, you know, we were supposedly supposedly supposed to follow down the aisleways. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, people don't no. pay attention to those lines anymore. No, no, no. And, and, and personally, I don't care. I don't care about those lines, but I do follow them because I don't want to be the asshole because I'm going to be the one that, crawl, you know, backs up and up into an aisle to grab something and someone will yell across the aisle, like Canadian Tire, hey, you're going in the wrong direction. Fuck off. I don't want to deal with that. So rather than being annoyed by people yelling at me for no reason, I go wherever the lines go, get in, get out, get my shopping done. Uh, I think it takes like a couple minute walk through and I think it takes longer to wait in line to get checked out. But why do the parking lot misbehavings of people transfer into the store? Yeah, you know, I know you can't, any of you drive properly. Well, majority of you anyway. I don't want to, you know, speculate on everybody. But majority of you can't drive with the worst shit. And you can't operate a vehicle in the parking lot properly. But obviously, I know why. Because none of you can walk through an aisle 
uh, properly. Some of you stop while I, you know, in the middle of an aisle randomly while so many people are walking behind you. Or you just n- are not looking and you walk through an entire store cross section looking to the right when everybody's coming from the left and you start bumping into people and then the whole COVID shit kicks in and then, oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, oh, my mask. Oh, uh, uh. I don't want to deal with any of that. Etiquette. It's going to be packed. Don't take your 11 children to Canadian Tire or Walmart at the same time and expect them to behave. Okay? It's, it, people don't need that. You can't, if you can't, if you have to, go during school when they're at school. Right. Park off, have them direct parking in the parking lot, then have them in the store. You know, put them to some good use. I don't want to deal with that. Old people, I love you. Go during old people hours. Because <laughs> I like to go in, get in, get out. Yeah. Done. I don't want to no. be like, okay, what, uh, which loaf of bread are you anticipating on buying t- in this <laughs> near future? Okay. I don't want to go through that in, in, in at the store. And it's right. a place to the grocery store. There is an aisle for one to 12 items. Listen, old lady, I don't want to be rude, but you have 22 things because I counted. You're in the wrong aisle. I don't want to be that guy. I'm already wearing a mask. Yeah, I'm already uncomfortable because I'm surrounded by people that are weird. And I don't want to yell at old ladies. Okay? But there's a reason everything works smoothly is when people don't do dumb shit like that. And I've seen this from a whole bunch of people, and it's annoying. Take this holiday season. Do your best to do what needs to be done to make the process go smoother, not make it worse. Drive properly, at least for now, because everybody's not going to be on the roads. When you're at the store with all the nonsense going on, just do your thing. Don't do the opposite. Make the process smooth for everybody. We'll get through it. We'll have a better weekend. And don't fucking piss me off. Thank you. Have a nice day. There you go. Well done. That was, I, I think that was one of your longer rants of the, of the, the past season. Yeah, it was a lot. Kudos. Kudos, good for you. Uh, another thing I wanted to throw in there really quick, and I'm sure you have experience with it. Uh, people that leave their uh, shopping carts not in the sh- shopping cart return area, and they just leave them right there in front of uh, in empty parking spaces. So like, dude, that's uh, that's such a dick move. I, I I I hate when people do that. Me, yesterday, me and the girlfriend were at Costco, and and yeah, there was one that we. I had to get out and move it because, like, I don't work at Costco, and there's people that should be doing this. That's their job <laughs> is to go and collect carts and right. bring them back, you know? So, yeah, that, that, that's one of my pet peeves, I think. It's funny that you mentioned that because I was actually – I stopped in at my last store on the way home was in Tecumseh at um, – shout out to um, uh, Food Basics in Tecumseh. And it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm walking out of there, I have, like, Two bags. I don't have to bring a cart because I'm awesome. And I'm following this lady who's pushing a cart. And she she's pushing a cart. She's off to the first. You know, you, know, you have that corridor in between uh, the, the store door and the outside door. That corridor in between there where they collect carts. There's a person there with cleaning stuff um, to sanitize your shit. The lady pushes her cart in, in that corridor, picks up her bags, takes it out of the cart. The cart's still rolling from one door to another, and she leaves it in the middle, blocking the entire exit to the store, and just fucking walks away. Again, I think I was in this state that happened. The little girl that's standing at the door welcoming people is like, what the, her look on her face was like, what the fuck? And I was like, oh. And then this lady just nonchalantly took her shit out, the cart left it as it was rolling, and walked the fuck out of the store. Who does that? Like, again, I was in too much of a hurry to, to tell this lady off because, again, I don't need that aggravation on my weekends. Or I'm trying to get some peace. Uh, but right. who does? What kind of person are you? And you bring up a great point. The Kark thing is stupid. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's just something that just people don't really need the, this time of year. Everyone is stressed as it is. And little stuff like that. So just just have a little bit of a better mindset when you're out there in the public and 
you know, obviously this has been a different year compared to ever. So, but just go out there, you know, just be mindful of others. That's the best thing. And if you see Jake, just get out of his way. Just get out oh, of his way. Hi, let's take a selfie, but but don't drive oh, slow. Yeah, yeah. They're like, <laughs> hey, you're the guy from the AG podcast. Yeah, that's right. Yes, I know. That's it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a message to Darren. Yes, let's take a selfie and send it. <laughs> we can see. We, we, we know which one is the favorite on the show. That's okay. Yeah, that's what it is. It's okay. We'll okay. Pass, I'll pass it on for him. It's all Thanks. good. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. No so there you go. Well, that this has been a very informative episode. I think we got a lot of good stuff done. Uh, so, yeah. So, do yourself a favor and... Uh, Try to, try to get out there as much as you can, but just not where Jake is going. And uh, just be mindful when you're out there is, uh, is important to say. Uh, Jake, uh, is there anything that we missed that we need to get to? Let's get to one last thing before we got to go. Uh, right. Find us everywhere on social media, uh, ADG Podcast on all your social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that other bullshit. Love it. Uh, find us there. Everywhere you stream your podcast. ADG podcast. You can find it everywhere on all your uh, podcast streaming platforms. Find us there. Uh, we should probably be able to squeeze in one more episode before the holidays. We'll bring yeah. you a special Christmas edition of the ADG yeah. podcast where we're going to shed out confetti, uh, smell like <laughs> Christmas trees, it's gonna be smell like cookies and gingerbread, uh, and stuff. everything. It's going to be awesome. Exactly. Uh, it, it'll come out as a surprise at some point within the next two weeks, maybe more. Who knows Who, what we'll we try, might uh, do we'll, in the we'll, next we'll, couple of weeks. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get the question out, like, what are you guys going to be doing for your COVID Christmas celebration? Oh, what yeah. are you guys' plans on uh, celebrating uh, the COVID holidays? This mm -hmm. year? You're staying home. You're keeping your group extra small because it looks like, Jake, we're going to be going into a lockdown. Who's uh, finally with me? Everybody, put your hands. Up. There you go. Everyone, meet, everyone meet in the me. park and uh, and meet Jake in the park and uh, get greeted by. Uh, See, they're by calling Lawson. already. They, they all want to. The call's yeah, already going. I'm, I'm excited. Let's get it done. So, all right, there you go. That's the show for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, find us everywhere. Like, subscribe, and share. Um, again, Darren had a good question. Uh, we'll we'll do that one on the next show. A bunch of Christmas. We'll play some Christmas music if you guys uh, are ready for that. Because if you, if you don't have enough, I have an insanely cool Christmas song that I guarantee you haven't heard. We'll th throw that Ooh. down on the next episode. And maybe, just maybe, there might be a giant surprise for everybody on the next show. Ooh. But we'll see what we can do. All right. Well, that sounds good. All hey. right. Well, that will do it for this episode of ADG Podcast for from all of us, to all of you, I'm Darren. And I'm Jacob. And we are ADG. Peace.